In this video series, you're going to learn how to create your own professional quality videos using software that you can download for free. To create our videos, we will use three different software programs. First, we'll use Camp Studio to capture the video from the screen. Then we'll use Sovig Abbey Trimmer to edit the clip. And then we'll use FLV Producer Lite to create the streaming video. You can download all of these programs from the links in the resources document. After you've downloaded Camp Studio and unzipped it, you will see a file list like this. The only thing we're going to be using is the recorder. If you're using Windows Vista, you're going to need to change this to run under compatibility mode. So all you have to do is right click on it and then go down and click properties and then go to compatibility and then run it in compatibility mode Windows XP Service Pack 2 and run this program as an administrator. Make sure that that's all set before you start and then click OK. Now what we can do is we can open this just by double clicking on it and then Camp Studio opens for us. You see a nice little window like this. Now let's go over how to set up Cam Studio so we can get going with a screen capture. On this example, I'm just going to record the Yahoo screen, but you would be recording something more useful than this, like a video tutorial. So let's go through the setup first. Now we have File, Region, Options, Tools, Effects, and View. So let's start. Well, File is just Record, Stop, Pause, and Exit. So let's start whether we want a region, a fixed region, a window, or full screen. These are the types of recordings you can do. A region allows you to select a region of the screen. A fixed region is a fixed size region that isn't a variable. A window will record a certain window, and full screen, of course, records the full screen. Now I usually, almost always, use region because I can select an area of the screen and no matter what window I bring up, it will still record that region. It allows you more flexibility than a fixed region. And if you use window, it will only record the window that you have open at the moment. If you open another window and try and record in the same spot where that window is, it's going to record the old window that you started with, so that doesn't work. And full screen usually makes a recording that's too big. Options. Okay, let's go with video options first. Here you can select your codices depending on which ones you have installed. You should install the Cam Studio Loose Less Codice version 1. This will shrink the size of the audio portion of your video. Now, if you don't have the Lossless Codice installed, there is a link in the resources area that shows you where to go get it and how to install it. Down here you can set your frame rate and your playback rate. You should just leave these at the defaults. And that's really all you have to do here. Next, cursor options. In here you can either hide your cursor during your recording. You can show your cursor. You can set the size of the cursor. And you can set the style of your cursor over here. So you can give it a shape. If you want like so and then it'll show up a little easier if you want to use this and then of course you can set the color in here now, if you don't want to use that just turn off the highlight okay. and once we're done there decide whether you want to record audio most cases you probably do, so you select record audio from the microphone if you're recording audio. And then you have to go to audio options and audio for the microphone. Here you're going to have a drop down list of your available audio options. So you just go and pick the ones in here that you want. Now here you have your recording format. Now the best one to use here is 44.1 kilohertz mono. 16-bit. This will 
give you the best sound quality as well as keep the sound from going on a synchronization in most cases. And then down here you have interleave audio every 100 milliseconds. You should just leave that alone. So that's all we really need to set here. Next we have enable auto pan. Now what auto pan does is it follows the cursor around the screen if in your recording region. And let's just, uh, well I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then you set your auto pan speed so that it follows your cursor around. So once you're doing auto pan, you do a couple of tests and see how fast you want it to go here. Okay, next we have our program options. Now you can set these to your particular preference. One of the ones I always like to set is save settings on exit. And then in name of AVI file, I always click ask for file name so that I can name it what I want it to. Okay. Now record the flash options. We're not actually going to use this but you can set those if you want. Keyboard shortcuts. This allows you to set the shortcut key for any of these particular functions here. And then you can choose your language. The only packs installed in this case are English and German. So you pick which one goes there. Basically now we're all set up. Now we'll get to the annotation a little later. Okay, so we're all ready to start our screen recording. So we'll go and we'll do that in the next video. Now that we're all set up, it's time to record our screen. Now if we set up our shortcut keys, we don't have to use any of these here. We can use what we set up in our shortcuts. Now remember our region, I said we would use a region, which is a region we can pick of any shape on the screen. So when I hit the record key, and I'll use this one rather than the shortcut key, you'll see that it comes up with a little pencil with a crosshair on it. So what you do is you put it up in the top left corner of where you want to start recording, hold down your left mouse button, and then drag it to the bottom right corner of where you want to record. And there it goes, recording. You'll see that there are some little flashing squares here, and that's where it's recording. Okay, so I'll let that record for a little bit. Then when you click stop, it asks you where you want to save it to, and then you save it somewhere. Okay, so now the players come up, so we'll just click the play button. Okay, so that gives you a look at how it works. Now there's something else we need to look at here. You'll notice that it stayed up here. And what we want it to do is to reduce. And that's why we can set the shortcut key to do that. Now to do that, we just set the options. We go into options. And then we go to program options, then minimize program start on start recording and that'll get it out of the way when we hit the record button. So now if we hit the record button, let me select our region. When we let go of the record or the little cursor there, you'll see that it has disappeared. Now you can either go down to the bottom where it'll be sitting on your taskbar and bring it up and tell it to stop recording or you can just hit the shortcut key that you used to make it stop. Okay now let's have a look at how the auto pan works like I said I would show you before. So if we enable auto pan and then we go and we select our auto pan speed. Okay now we set record and set our region. I just set it a little smaller so you can see how it works. What we do is we just move our cursor around in here 
and you see that the recording area is following my cursor around. You see that? Okay. Now let's stop the recording and then see what it does when we view it. Okay, so here's our player. Let's click play. And you'll see that it's following our cursor around. So that's how the zoom and pan feature works. So you can use it in a smaller area on your screen and then move the cursor around and we'll focus somewhere else on your screen. Now we're going to look at how to set up screen annotations. If we go into tools and we go to screen annotations, it brings up a little window like this. At this point, we can choose any of these the shapes that we want to use. Let's just use banner for instance. Now if we right click on it, and we click edit text we can change the text within this shape so like so very cool video now as we have to do once we have changed the text that we want there is just put our left mouse button on it and click on it hold the mouse button down and then drag it and plop it onto our video here. And we can put this anywhere we want. And this now acts as a caption for us. And when we record, this is going to appear on our video. So if we were to record now, okay, and then we were to now stop our video and we'll save it. Okay, so here's our player. And you'll see that it's in here. This is actually the one, <laughs> move that out of the way. Okay, this is the one that is appearing inside our video here. So that's how you can use screen annotations to put some shapes with some text on your video. We also have video annotations and if you have a webcam you can also put a webcam right into your video as well just by clicking on video annotations and then moving your webcam window inside here. And then in effects we can add the system timestamp if we want. Click on that and the timestamp is going to appear in our video. We can add a caption if we want and we can add a watermark to our video if we want and the picture will show across the video as a watermark. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. You just record the screen and use the options that you want to use. Your voice will be integrated in the recording. Now that you have your recording made, you're most likely going to need to edit it. If you've made some mistakes in there, did some ums and ahs, and you made some mistakes along the way, you don't have to start all over again. You can just go past the mistake and then re-record just after it, and then you can go back and cut it out. And that's where we're going to use our editing software to do that. So we'll do that next. One of the most important things to do when you're making videos is to edit out your mistakes. There's no doubt that you're going to be doing some umming and awing and you may make some mistakes along the way, but that doesn't mean you have to start your video all over again. If you misspoke, you can just speak all over again and record that bit over again without worrying about the mistake before it because you can edit it out later. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. Uh, the first thing we need to do is install our software which is Solvig Abbey Trimmer. So you should have downloaded that from the resources area and then you'll have a zip file like this so you should unzip it. And then once you've unzipped it, double click on the exe file and run that. Of course on Windows Vista you get all these security things. Now there's something that we need to do in here. We agree to this. 
uncheck the Solvig WMP trimmer plug-in shareware. You don't need that and that's something you would have to pay for. So uncheck that, click next, and next, and next, and next, and install the thing on your computer. Okay, now we'll start it up. And here's what it looks like here. Let's close some of these things. All right, so here is our piece of software that we're gonna to use to edit out our mistakes. Okay, so now the first thing we need to do is to bring up our source file. So we saved our test file, so just go find it on your computer. And we'll load it in. Now, a little player came up here. There it is. And then we have our main software window here. So what we do is where we're going to start keeping what we want, we're going to put our first marker, which we have here. And at the end of what we want to keep, we're going to put our marker there. So we'll start at the beginning and we'll play through. And if we wanted to cut out the first few seconds, what we would do is pause it, put a marker in there, now it would keep everything between this marker and the end. Now what I can do is I can go forward from here okay so we're watching the video behind here and then when we get to the spot that we want to keep we would put the other side of the marker in there. Okay, this is now a part of the new video we're going to keep. So what we do is we click Add, and it adds that piece of the clip into our finished product, or what will be our finished product. This is our bin of clips that is going to be in our finished product. So now what we do is we just continue playing, and when we find where we want to start again to keep the next bit, we put another marker here. And now at this point, it would keep everything from here forward, but we can continue to edit just by listening and watching. And if we find the place where we want to stop, okay, so there's where you want to keep that portion. So we'll put this marker on that side. And then what we will do is we will add so basically, what's in our clip bin were the things between the markers, which is what we're keeping. Everything else will be discarded on output. So we'll continue. Okay, so we want to discard what's in here, and we want to keep from there to the end. So we put a marker here, and then we click Add, and it puts everything in there from there to the end. So now we have three clips in here, or three portions of our main clip that will make out our output clip. So what we do now is we give it a destination file. Let's click here, and then we'll give it a name at the bottom here, and we can just call it fixed, or whatever you want to call it. Done. Whatever you want to call it, you just put it here, and save. Now what we have to do is click Run, and you see the progress bar here and our new clip is now complete. So if we were to go and click on it on our desktop, and bring it up in the media player, this will contain only the parts of our clip that we wanted and it has discarded the mistakes that we were trying to take out of it. So that's how simple it is to edit your clip. Now in the next part we're going to go over how to create a streaming video from our AVI file that we've just edited. Now we're going to use FLV Producer Lite to create our FLV file. FLV files are streaming video.
So what we need to do is find our input video, which is our edited video. So just click on Browse and find it on your computer. Now we need to have an output folder to put all the files in. So you'd want to create a new folder here. So you can do that by clicking Browse and then go somewhere on your desktop or whatever and create a new folder and then give it a name. And we'll select that and now it's going to go in done our output video is done.flv and our output html is index.html we click next now in here we can set the size of our video we have some presets here for instance dsl is 320 by 240 modem is 160 by 120 and isdn is 240 by 180. however you can go down here and make it any size you want out of the selections there. Your frame rate and your bit rate, you can change those if you want, but you should leave them the way they are unless you know what you're doing here. And you can enable audio and we'll set that to mono because it's how we recorded it. And you have your bit and sampling rates here. Now all you have to do is click start encoding and you'll see the bar go across as it creates the FLV file. Now it's all done, so we click next, a little arrow there. Up here we can give it a page title, whatever you want there. If you want it to pause at the start, the buffer size you can set here to preload the movie. If you want to show a border around the movie. And you can enable an affiliate link, although I don't think there's an affiliate program for this anymore. This is disabled on the light version as well as are the other players so you have to use a standard player now what you want to do is click produce a web page and it will have created the index page inside of our folder and now what we do is click preview web page click on that and there it is our video is now in flv format and if we click on there it starts to play just like it should Okay, so that's all fine. And now if we go and we open up our folder where we saved everything, you'll see that in here we have done.flv, which is the name that we gave our output file. After we edit it, we have our index, which is our main index page. If somebody clicks on that, it plays a video, and then the player is here. So those are the only three files you need. So that's it. Now. If you, let's open this again here for a second. I'm just going to open it with Firefox. It's faster. Now you notice, let me move this up a bit. That it's got learn more about Flash video. You may want to take that off there because it goes back to their website as you can see here. So let's go and edit this. We'll just do an open with and we'll open it with Notepad. And then we'll go to the bottom and we'll just get rid of this at the bottom just these two lines delete that out of there and save and now if we open this again and we move it up a bit you'll see that that link is now gone there Okay, and now one more thing I want to show you is how you could put this video on a sales page. Now, a lot of times people put a video on their sales page to demonstrate some feature of their product. So all you have to do is take this code, you just open it with Notepad, and then you just grab everything inside the body tag here. So just grab all of this just before this body and just after that body tag. Just copy it and then you can paste that right into your website. Now your main website and all of these files, the done and the player, have to be together. You won't need this index file, just the contents that we have here. So I'm going to go and grab a demo website and then we're going to show you how to do that. 
Okay, so I've moved a site into here. Now, what we want to do is first we're going to copy these two files in with all of our other site files. And then when we upload our site to our server, these will go with it. So we'll just take these and then we'll paste them into here. The next thing we're going to want to do is either open our main site in a web editor or we can do with Notepad if we know where to put the code. So first let's open this index page that was created for us with FLV Producer Lite. And then let's just grab everything between these body tags like I was saying before. Just highlight it and then do a copy. And then we can close this. Now I'll go back to our site here. We can either open this with Notepad or we can open it with a program like Composer. So I'm going to open it with Composer. You can just do a search on Google for Composer and you'll be able to find it. We'll just do an open and we'll find our site file. Okay, and then we open up the index of our main site and it brings it up in here. Now we decide where we want the video to go. Just in the editor and we can just click and decide where we want to go and then all we have to do is glue insert and HTML. Then we just paste that code right in there. Your editor may work somewhat different, but that's all you have to do is figure out where to paste the code and then paste it in and save. Now when we open up our index page, we're going to open with Firefox, we roll down, there is our encoded video in our web page. So we've actually put it in there and it's all ready to go. Now let's talk about producing it in regular Flash. To do this, you can do this right from Cam Studio. Just go to Tools and go to SWF Producer. That brings up another window like this. And then all you have to do is open your file. So our file is called done.avi. Then brings it up in player like this. And you can preview it here if you want. Now all we have to do, go to File, Convert to SWF. And now we get some options here. Now first of all, you can change where your output files are going to show up. So I might want to put it in a folder here. So all we can do is click Change. And then you can create a folder where you want it to go if you want. Or to say Test. Okay, and then our HTML follows it. Okay, and then down here, you can choose whether you want color in 16 or 32 bit. Your sample playback rates and your keyframe rates, you can leave those alone. And code audio compression, and this is compressed, and you can have PCM as no compressed. You probably leave it as it is. Add player controls, you're probably going to want that. Whether you want it to auto start, or if you don't want it to auto start, then unclick that. Add the preloader and the progress bar. And you can produce a raw movie for further editing if you have Flash MX editor. And you can have it loop. We don't want it to loop, so you take that off. And after the video is played, you can put a redirect URL in here if you want. On interface, you can change how things look here. You can have how much the percentage of the movie you want to preload. So you can change that if you want. And down here, you can give it a border and a background color if you want. So we'll just give it a border of one. And of course, this is optional. Advanced options, you're probably going to want to leave this alone. This will chain multiple SWF files. Okay, so when we're all good here, we just click OK. And now it's generating our files for us. Okay, so that's all done. Then we go we'll open up our test folder. And we have our Do an open with Firefox with our 
HTML file that was created for us. Okay, so here is our Flash video and it's now open in Firefox. And if, here's our controllers at the bottom that we can control it with. You notice that it produces it in the size of the video. So if you want to use the SWF producer, you need to make sure that your video is the size that you're going to want your flash to be also. Okay, so that is how you can create quality videos using only free tools.